On November 15, 2004, 77-year-old Tina Webb was swimming in the waters of False Bay when she was attacked and eaten alive by a giant great white shark. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying shark attack on Tina Webb. Welcome to Final Affliction. It was November 13, 2004. The harbor at Cock Bay in Fishhook, Cape Town, South Africa was noisy and busy with the influx of people readying for the day ahead. It was still early in the morning, just before the sun had fully risen, but the fishermen were already out and about. They knew that the reduced daylight provided the perfect cover for a good catch. After all, fish tend to seek shadows and hiding places, feeding in the peace and quiet of the early morning. As the men chattered away at the harbor, they secured their gear and equipment by the boats, ensuring they had everything necessary. Cock Bay Harbor was a few kilometers away from Fishhook Beach, a white sand beach popular amongst surfers, kayakers, and tourists. A tight-knit community, as the seaside village was mostly home to local retirees and families. It is undeniably one of the most popular places in Cape Town. When everything was ready, the fishermen began their journey a few kilometers from Cock Bay Harbor toward False Bay, where fish were waiting for them. A sliver of daylight illuminated a portion of the sky, giving it a reddish, early morning glow. The fishermen were just in time. Reaching the designated fishing spot, the fishermen turned off their engines so as not to spook the incoming school of fish they had carefully prepared for. The weather was great. The fresh, southeast winds blowing over the calm currents of False Bay carried with it the salty scent of the sea. The fishermen readied their nets for casting as the fish scrambled in groups, swimming across the ocean a few meters underneath the boat. In complete synchronicity, they threw the nets and let them sink toward the school of passing fish. Moments later, they pulled it toward the surface to reveal their catch. One glance at their nets, and they knew something was not right. Among their catch was a bunch of fish called white steambras. These powerful, hard-fighting fish can kick up a lot of commotion. If a group is somehow caught in a net, they can make the water look like it is boiling from how aggressive they shake. Steambras were also protected fish, so the fishermen knew they had to release them immediately. However, the vibrations caused by the fish were enough to catch the attention of one of the most feared fish in the sea. A great white shark suddenly emerged from the depths, exposing its formidable head to the surface, looking for the injured animal causing the commotion in the water. As the fishermen saw the shark, they released the steambras back into the sea. The shark was curious but quickly turned uninterested. It roamed around the area for a few minutes and then eventually swam away, parallel to Fishhook Beach. Realizing that the shark was heading toward the popular beach where various people were swimming, the fishermen immediately took action after releasing the steambras. They headed straight toward Fishhook Beach and began waving a red flag. This was to let the people swimming on the beach know that they spotted a shark around the area. Immediately, the people got out of the water and there was no incident. The next day, on November 14th, Fishhook Beach prohibited people from entering the water. However, throughout the day, no sharks were spotted in the area, so the authorities decided to open the beach for swimming again the next day. This would prove to be a fatal decision. November 15, 2004, although it was a Monday, a workday, many people roamed Fishhook Beach, taking advantage of the clear, cloudless morning. The somewhat chilly winds blew strongly from the south. However, it was weak enough that smaller waves with foamy crests did not appear at False Bay. The waters were unusually warm and calm today and lacked their usual swell. It was 7 a.m. and Tina Webb was at the beach, dipping her toes in the sand. She was preparing for another swim at False Bay. Although she was fully aware of the warnings from the previous day, Tina was not bothered at all. To her, this was simply another day among her frequent visitations to the beach. After all, she had been swimming here six days a week for 17 years. It was inevitable that Tina would end up frequenting this place. 
Since moving to Cape Town with her husband in 1987, they fell in love with the place and made it a habit to visit the beach during their free time. However, when Tina's husband died, she had been living alone in an apartment at Sunny Cove, a place five minutes away from Fishhook. Tina would visit the beach alone in the mornings and go for a swim a couple of hundred meters away from shore toward the deeper parts of False Bay. Although her friends warned her not to stray too far into the ocean, Tina was a bit stubborn and would never listen to them. After all, she was an incredibly strong swimmer who had a lot of experience. Unfortunately, today was different, and no amount of experience could have saved Tina from what was to come. Arriving at the beach, Tina walked across Jagger Walk, a famous coastal footpath following a curve of granite boulders and rock. This is an actual image of Tina taken by a photographer who happened to be at the beach on that same fateful day. After meandering for a bit, Tina was ready to swim. She entered the water and quickly began making her way into the deeper parts of False Bay. Tina found the ocean disarming. Even though she had seen every stone and corner of Fishhook Beach in the past 17 years, Tina never grew tired of the place. Visiting the beach and dipping her toes in the sand became a normal part of her everyday life. Tina swam through the waters and eventually stopped at a spot approximately 60 meters off Jagger Walk. She did one of her favorite maneuvers, the backstroke, and continued moving toward the deeper waters of Falls Bay. Unwittingly, she was heading toward her demise. The same giant great white shark that was spotted a few days ago appeared near the end of Cock Bay. Sensing the presence of Tina, it swam toward her attracted by the splashing from her backstrokes. The massive creature cocked its head from side to side, sizing up the 77-year-old from under her. Unfortunately, Tina hadn't the slightest idea of the predator underneath her. She was too busy admiring the birds flying through the morning sky. In one swift motion, half of the shark's body emerged from the waters. The creature lazily opened its massive jaws and clamped down on Tina with its rows of razor-sharp six-inch teeth. The poor woman was defenseless against such a powerful predator as it squeezed her torso into its mouth. The deep blue color of the water turned red as Tina was slowly suffocating by the pressure of the shark around her body. It shook her left and right as if it were barely even trying until finally Tina broke loose from the shark after a chunk of her ripped away into the shark's mouth. The shark thrashed around while chewing on the piece of meat from Tina's body before swallowing it whole and returning for more. Tina, who was bobbing in the water in pain and barely hanging on to consciousness, struggled to remain afloat. The creature swam swiftly toward her once again and clamped onto her body. There was nothing she could do. With Tina between its jaws, the great white shark took her under the water and swam into the depths of the ocean, where she likely would have drowned before the shark could finish her off. The water eventually went calm, and amidst the dissipating cloud of blood was Tina's red bathing cap, floating on the surface where Tina had moments prior been peacefully swimming. Many people saw the incident happening. After all, about 30 to 40 people were swimming at Fishhook Beach that morning. However, the attack occurred so quickly, nobody had time to react. Before anyone could do anything, Tina was already gone. Tim Atkins, in a car high on the mountainside, was one of the witnesses to the attack. I suddenly saw a shark coming at great speed from the Cock Bay end of the beach towards where the woman was swimming, he said. The shark hardly slowed down. It just hit her, and the water was full of blood. It made two turns, grabbed her in her side, and pulled her under the water. The shark then turned and headed out to sea. I think it had the woman in its jaws. Two National Sea Rescue Institute rescue craft were summoned to search for Tina. Additionally, a helicopter was dispatched to the scene. During this search, the helicopter pilot spotted a massive great white shark swimming near Fishhook. He noted that it was larger than the helicopter and the biggest great white shark he has ever seen. Authorities speculated that the shark was around 6 to 7 meters in length. Like most apex predators, the great white shark typically uses its bite as a way to test potential prey. 
In most shark attacks from great white sharks, the victim usually sustains injuries from a single bite, as humans aren't typically on the shark's menu. However, in Tina's case, the shark returned for Tina after its initial bite, leading authorities to believe she was targeted as prey and she would most likely never be found. Eventually, the search for Tina was called off by the afternoon, and the beaches were closed once again. Just like authorities predicted, Tina's body was never found, and all that was left was her bathing cap, which washed up on shore, identified by her son-in-law in the subsequent investigations. Undoubtedly, the shark attack on Tina Webb was tragic. However, shark expert Dr. Leonard Campagno, director of the Shark Research Institute at the Ezeko South African Museum, surmised the event logically. An attack is always a possibility unless you don't go into the water. This was a risk Tina had taken every day in these waters for 17 years, which tragically resulted in her final affliction.